Hey mamas, welcome to this episode of Mama Talk Live. I'm gonna be waiting for my co-host, uh, the beautiful Molly Ann Luna. It's uh, an exciting topic that we're talking about actually. And as we speak, talking about multitasking and everything, uh, my baby just stepped out. Hey, okay, I'm my co-host, here you are. Hey Molly. <laughs> Good to see you. Yes, how are you doing? Uh, Welcome, Mama. Good. Oh, <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I'm well, doing so well. Yes? Gosh, it's like, okay. <laughs> hey, Mama. It's a little bit of awkwardness. I just had my baby literally walk out the door. No, I it's okay. Them. You know, I love coming together every Tuesday for this show, but like, we look, we look put together and polished and great, but let's be real. Five seconds ago, it was like, get the nanny out the door. Get the baby out the yes. door. Yes, yes, That's exactly what was happening in my household. It was like mayhem. And it was like, yes, just to get. So, yes, it takes an effort to put the makeup on and to look dolled up. Because in reality, most of the life in the, in, you know, behind cameras is so, it's so completely different. And that's, that's actually why we're here. I know. So, so mom, yeah, mommies, we're here for you. <laughs> oh, yes, absolutely. We know what you guys are going through. That's, that's the truth. Um, welcome to Mama Talk Live. I'm Valentina Izara. And I'm Molly Ann Luna. And in case this is your first episode with us, this is the place to be where All American Mommy sits down with Latina Mamacita to discuss all topics relevant to motherhood. That's right. So grab your latte or your cafecito because it's about to go down. There are no topics off limits. Mommy, like we know you wear a million hats from being the best mother, wife, chauffeur, cook, girlfriend, daughter, all the things. <laughs> yes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's right. So mama, uh, let's talk. Uh, in today's episode, we're going to be sharing with you how to stay motivated and focused even when the kids are pulling you in a million directions. So mama, I know that there are so many girlfriends out there that need to hear this message. So please take a moment right now and click share and invoit, invoit, that's not a word, invite, <laughs> <laughs> invite them to join our conversation today. Yes, that's right, because we do do a million different things. And I was sharing on my uh, social media earlier on Mamas Con Ganas, you know, in order to, to promote this talk a little bit, because I think it's so important. And I found this picture of this woman who looked like an Indian goddess. And I was saying, no, this is not an Indian goddess. This was a woman. It was an image of a woman with all these different hands. And she was, you know, dealing with all the different things that we as mamas have to deal with our lives you know or we should when when we give birth we're already growing this extra bean in our body like it would be so cool if we could just grow a few extra arms so we could be multitasking yes yes oh. yes we should all be these indian goddesses i think that's what we need to be maybe that's what it is maybe that's why the indian goddess has a bunch of hands because they know that we need all these different hands to deal with all the things that we go through and and I think it's very, um, sometimes we feel alone in feeling that we don't have what it takes to stay motivated, you know, and mostly when we become mothers, you know, because before motherhood, you know, we, we I think it was like, we had, the, we had the sense of the right to know that we had our dreams and our, our things that we, that we had aspirations to accomplish. And then all of a sudden motherhood comes and for some reason, you know, it's like women feel all of a sudden guilty about still having their dreams and their goals to accomplish. And, mm -hmm. you know, we're here to tell you that you have permission. I, right? oh, yes, you do have permission. There's a, I don't know about you, Valentina, but when I stepped into motherhood, like I had almost an identity crisis of, wait a minute, I don't know who I am. I'm not going to be just mm -hmm. Molly Ann anymore. I'm stepping mm -hmm. in and taking on this whole other avenue, this whole other role. But guess what? Just because baby came into my life, my dreams and ambitions for myself have not ceased. They might have absolutely slowed down a bit. Yes. <laughs> and they and they do. I think, you know, mostly in those first couple of months, it's so um, over, overwhelming. I'm going to say the word because it is overwhelming. It's exhausting. It's exhausting. And it's exhausting. Yes. Yeah, so Brain. when we first step into that... <laughs> into that role, we, we sort of feel our identity being taken away. But we need to allow ourselves and give ourselves that permission to say it's okay to still to be a mother and to keep being a good mother, but also to have my dreams and to have these goals that are outside of the, the, you know, the spectrum of motherhood and the scope of motherhood. So first, whoever is out there listening to this, you know, if you feel discouraged, because I think a lot of times we have this like, So, you know, 
Go ahead. Oh, it's just the, the, the joys and the struggles of doing a, a, a digital show like this when we're so far apart. Sorry, you had just cut out there for a second. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> no, what I was saying is that sometimes I feel it's also outside pressure. You know that, um, and I know that in my, in my, in, in my Latino background, sometimes we have pressures, even our own mothers, that all of a sudden, you know, they try to almost sort of tell us that we don't have the, you know, the right to, to pursue our dreams or that, you know, those things should be secondary to motherhood. And I feel that we, we need to be strong enough within ourselves to, you know, allow ourselves to, you know, to stay you know, true to our dreams, because otherwise we can become unhappy. And when we're unhappy, we can't be good mothers, right? That's right. That's right. We can't be good mothers when we're unhappy. And whether or not you have an outside influence verbally saying that to you, I mean, some people experience that. That's not my experience. However, there is this inner voice inside of myself because I grew up with an amazing mother who was very hands-on. And her career, she's an entrepreneur, her career was child rearing. She has raised so many kids and she loves, 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 loves being home and doing the full-time uh, baby thing. And so there's this voice, she's never, ever said this to me, ever. But there's this even voice that sometimes I have to combat within my own self of saying, like, no, Molly, it's okay. You can still be a good mother and you can still have your carved out. Not carved out. That sounds weird. I know. But um, I can still be a very present, mindful mommy. And I can still also pursue something outside of motherhood. Yeah, and sometimes it's not even what the people say. I think it's exactly that. It's maybe our own voices in our head, you know, that even when we don't hear things actually said, spoken out loud, like we get a sense of, you know, am I putting my priorities in the right place? But we're also priorities, and we want to let you guys know that, you know, you having your own dreams and aspirations, you have nothing to feel guilty about. It's actually oh, hard guilt, life. Mommies, let it go. Throw some hearts yeah. and some likes if you're ready to let that mommy guilt go. <laughs> <laughs> with that said let's step into like number one so here we're going to give you four tips as to how to stay motivated while the kids are pulling you in a million different directions because that's what happens with us daily um and number one on that list is to basically put first things first you and um, what just you want yes mm -hmm. is that so where I, you're going <laughs> what happened so is that where you're going with it knowing what you want and yet a goal for yourself yes yeah, knowing what you want, setting a goal for yourself, and putting those first things first. Mm -hmm. So um, you can elaborate a little bit more on that. If, if Yeah, well, I'll just, I'll speak for myself. A year ago, my daughter's a year and a half now, and I, I got one of those Facebook time hop things. It was like, this was you a year ago. And I thought that I was on a path of, of I thought I knew what I wanted and where I was going, but I was letting motherhood totally overwhelm me at that time. And what I've now been doing has been setting actual SMART goals, which stands for specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time sensitive, and actually taking the time to write it down, pen to paper, and not only write it down, but read it, read it out loud, hearing myself speak the goals every single day, Ideally with my accountability partner, but if, if not with somebody in the mirror telling myself, hey, this is where you want to go. Because you have Molly, can you can you repeat those things that were specific to the goals? Because I think it's important for them to hear it again. Uh, a little bit slower. Mom, Mommy's it's making you, sure um, that your goals are sorry. Tell them again. Yeah. Mommy, if you're watching too, this is an interactive show. We want to be hearing from you. And so we encourage you to take notes and help another mommy out who might not be able to listen to the show. They can at least scroll through the comments and get those bullet points. So again, just very quickly, setting SMART goals. That's an acronym. S stands for specific. Get very, very specific. M is make it measurable, be able to quantify how you know it's going to be a success. So either it's a monetary value or it's a number of people, a number of sales, wh wherever you're going with um, your intention. Make it attainable. Make it something that you actually know can be achieved, either through your own experience or through seeing it through somebody else. R is making it realistic. M set a goal, but make sure it's realistic for you and your current lifestyle in your current situation. And then T is time sensitive. Make sure you're adding a date of when you will achieve this goal. 
Yes, and it's important to know what your goals are and then afterwards setting in terms of prioritizing because once you know exactly what those goals are, you need to make sure that you put your that you put your priorities straight so that you get those things accomplished. And the reason why it, we know, um, you know, how Molly was saying, she reads her goals out loud and then we, and we do this exercise every morning. And one of the best things that we get out of that conversation together is then afterwards, once we know what our goal is, we're able to say, okay, then what is my intent for the day in terms of being able to accomplish that goal? Because when you always have your goal in mind, you always know what, those first things first are. Mm -hmm. So you always know what you're able to prioritize during the day, because if you don't really have that goal in mind and you don't have it written down and you don't have it, you don't have it specific or attainable and all those things that Molly described when they're not, when they're not there in your mind mm -hmm. and you're not, you don't have a daily reminder of what your goal is, you might prioritize completely different and you might give priority to something that actually does not have any importance. Mm -hmm. And just on that, on that um, alone, I wanted to share with you guys something that will also help you. Like once you set your goals, um, you know, setting your goals is a quadrant. It's called the Kobe quadrant, and it allows you to organize your the things that you need to do in terms of whether they're urgent and important. Oh, that's number one. Important and not urgent, because there's a very big difference. Hmm not important and urgent and not important and not urgent. Hmm. So I don't know if, cause when I, I know when see, it comes out backwards, you guys can't read this, right? Yeah, we'll take, I actually have a trick for that for our next episode, I'll teach you. Uh, okay. But we'll do a screenshot of that for you mommies and we'll put it in the comments below so you can make note of it. But I'm, I'm yeah. so grateful that you are bringing this up, like prioritizing them because we can have a million goals I'm guilty of this. If I read my gold card to you out loud, it'd probably take three minutes right now because it's quite extensive. But noting within the day, what's your priority? If, for example, your priority is family for the day, then that's okay. Make family your priority. You might have doctor's appointments or haircuts you've got to get the kids to or school supplies to get or whatever's on your agenda. Does that make sense? <laughs> yes, absolutely, absolutely. Um, the interesting thing about this quadrant that I'm, that, like I said, Molly said, we're gonna share um, on the comments below so that you can do this exercise for yourself, is that most people actually tend to do quadrant one, which is the important and urgent, but those are the basically the things that are like crying out, do me, do me, do me, like now, which is basically like crying, like a crying baby. You need to take care of that, and you, you need to take care of that immediately, right? Or like a, the kitchen goes on fire or something. Those are like, but quadrant number two is actually the one that's the most important for all of us to be able to attain our goals. And those are the things that are not urgent, but they're important. And why is that, that that's the quadrant we want to focus on and when we want to stay there? It's because those are the things that will strategically allow us to get to our goals and accomplish our goals. And, um, and that, those are things that are exercises actually included on there. And your vocation is included on there and planning is included in there. So those are the things that we might not give priority to, but it's actually, and it, they might not seem urgent, but they're super important. And that's why once you get this structure down, you'll know, okay, this is my goal. And then I need to go to be able to plan so that my goal is reached by doing things that will help me accomplish that goal. So Valentina, I, I work with a lot of mommies who partner with MLM companies. And so I was going to ask you for an example, but I, I'm going to give one real quick and let me know if I'm, if I'm getting this right. So an okay. example might be, it's important to make sure that when you are, you're in an MLM partnership, which means uh, you're promoting or selling someone else's brand, that you get your two asks out daily. You present the offer to two new people, but it might not be urgent. It's not like, it's not like that's necessarily going to put money in your bank account right away or that anything's going to necessarily change in an instant like that, but, but it's important to do it because that consistent, persistent action over the long term will start gaining momentum and the compound effect will actually start to bring forth that success that you're seeking. Yes, absolutely. And it's those things that we might not do because we think, oh, they're not urgent. But in reality, our, if we do them step by step every day, just a little bit of that and a little bit of that and a little bit of that, we're planting the seeds for everything else to grow. So um, this exercise is a really, actually it was my life coach who presented this quadrant to me. And it's really interesting because 
the not urgent and important and important is talks about relationship building it's about relationship building recognizing new opportunities mm -hmm. planning and prevention and also has recreation in it as well instead of doing the things the things that usually people do are actually in the quadrant of not important but urgent mm -hmm. and those are interruptions because we all get interrupted right and that's what we're talking about today the fact that our kids are pulling us in, in a million different directions so uh, you, usually we get called you know caught up in like interruptions or calls or emails or reports or some meetings or pressing matters mm -hmm. and popular activities, but they not, might not necessarily help us stay on track with what we want to accomplish. And those are also the things that will, you know, we do them so often, but in reality, we get sad afterwards that we're not getting the results that we want. And so when we're not getting the results that we want, uh, it's hard to stay motivated, right? Mm -hmm. So, but going back to the number one, so the number one, again, so that we're not confusing you guys, is to basically make sure what your goals are. Because when you know what your goals are, you can then prioritize. And mm -hmm. the quadrant that we talked about will help you guys prioritize that. So have your goal in mind. So then that ties into our second, our second thing that you should do, which is eliminate and concentrate, which is they kind of go hand in hand. And Valent it's, I really think that in order to eliminate things, like you have to set boundaries. You have to set boundaries for yourself, for your family, for your kiddos, sometimes for your husband, and you have to learn how to exercise the power of no, which super important. I'll be honest, sometimes it's really hard for me because I yeah. want to be in all places at once. Yes, and m women are pleasers. We love to please. That's just I don't know. I, I don't know if it's part of our nature. I mean, I I, I think that problem we do. We are. But saying no is so hard, but. I think once we're able to, if we know what it is that we truly want, and obviously we can't be rude with people and saying no in a way where we're being, I think, disrespectful or, um, you know, putting people down. But if we're able to step into that place where we're able to say no to things mm -hmm. that are not helpful for us, then we can say yes to the things that will, you know, eventually, not eventually, that, that, are, that will make us happy actually right mm -hmm. there and then. And it also feels like a relief. Doesn't it sound good to, you know, when you say no to things that you might feel like you're forced to doing it, but you're not necessarily, you know that you shouldn't be doing it, or you know that it's taking you away from something that's actually more important. Mm -hmm. when, you say, when you're finally able to say no in a secure way and in a manner where you're stepping into your truth, it just feels like, whew, you feel so much lighter. Mm -hmm. I, I was going to say that for me, it's like once I learned how to set some more boundaries for myself and, and it's okay and actually healthy to sometimes say no to my husband and to my daughter's needs, I have just been able to move through my day with more purpose and clarity. I've been more centered and focused. So an example of that was uh, I'm about three or four months into this practice, but I decided that I'm carving out the hours of from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. That is my hour. So I have a little one who still wakes up in the middle of the night or early mornings. And I just, I had to set the boundary with my husband and say, you know, he likes to stay up late and do whatever he likes to do, watch movies or play video games or work on his craft. And that's fine, but I'm just telling him, okay, well, how do I want to start this? For a while, I was letting that go for a long time and then being like, Okay, well, you're tired in the morning, so you can sleep in. But I had to set a boundary and say, no, I need my 6 a.m. success hour to get myself centered and focused so that I can show up and feel more connected, one with myself, and I can have more to give because I first gave to myself and did my sacred practices in the morning. And since I have set that boundary up, I have noticed so much ease in my business, so much ease and harmony within my relationships. Um, Absolutely. The baby doesn't wake up that often anymore, but if and when she does, the two of them love that time together. Yes, absolutely. Like it's, it's, it's miraculous what it does to actually say no to certain things because you're, you're able to step in that mm -hmm. laser focus of like you knowing exactly how, okay, like this is the boundaries that I'm putting in. And then therefore afterwards, everybody in your life also steps it up a notch. Like my son knows now, like when we have our calls in the morning, mommy's that's mommy's like sacred time. Mm -hmm. And so everybody in the household starts helping me out when I have these things where they know that those are things that mommy has scheduled out. 
And as the kids grow older, it's also important for them, I think, to know everybody, their boundaries. And also for the hubby, you know, when, when we don't have things defined and clearly outlined in our calendars, sometimes our husbands think that our calendars, I don't know, it's completely oh, open. You're just Any available. Oh, you'll do it. <laughs> exactly. And yeah. actually that happens not just with our husbands, it happens with our friends, it can happen with everybody. And they just think that our, our schedule's up for grab. And and also, in particular, for people that work at home, like, you know, Molly, Molly and, and I, we both work from home. And so sometimes people get that sense of every, you know, they can call us whatever they want, or that, you know, that we don't have a schedule that we <laughs> abide, that we abide by. But Actually, we've learned that by eliminating, you know, we can concentrate on our things. And when we actually set strict boundaries around our work times and things that are important to us, people around us start also respecting what we do. And they also start helping and, and, and helping us in achieving that. So for anybody out there who thinks that, that they have to do everything and that they have to say yes to everything, um, remember, you have the right to set your own schedule. Don't do it. <laughs> Yes, you have the right to set your own schedule and you have the right to set your boundaries. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and that will help you stay motivated because when we don't do that, it, it, it feels like we can be pulled in a million different directions and we don't go anywhere. And we don't want to be those like swirling mommies. It was just like, feels like everything's chaos and we have no control. Like I, setting these boundaries, I'm glad that you brought up that it's, it's going to help improve the lives of our kiddos and our spouses because I've noticed that since setting that boundary for myself, all of a sudden now my husband has this evening routine that he does that's more productive and more focused towards his long-term goals. Whereas before it was like, oh, I'm just going to watch TV until I pass out on the couch. And it's because I had set that morning boundary for myself. And he's like, yeah, well, now I've got to get to bed at a decent time so that I can get up and I can help with the, with the babe and honor my wife. And it's, I just have to say it's a game changer and mommy don't feel guilty around it, but you need to, which kind of ties into our other bullet point, create that sacred time for you. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Create your sacred time for you. And that means different things for everybody. But so eliminate to concentrate so that you focus on what you want. Mm -hmm. But this is different. It might seem like the same thing, but it's not. When we talk about sacred me time, we talk about things that you that actually keep you fueled, mm -hmm. you know, and for everybody, that means something very different. Um, for myself, I know that that activity is dance. Like if I have dance in my life, I feel like life is good. Everything else could just like, whatever, you know, peace out. I step into the, into the dance room and it's like, it's Valentina time. I don't have to do anything else except just do that. So if you like reading, make sure you're reading. If you like exercising, make sure you're doing it, whatever it is that you do. And Molly, tell them about what you love to do because I think that's so important to have everybody, you know, knowing that this is so different from person to person. It is different from person to person. And mine has changed. It, it changes all the time. But currently, my sacred ritual in the morning looks like I wake up at 5.30, I head to the gym, and which used to drive me crazy. I would never want to work out in the morning. But now I love it because like hardly anybody's there. I get a workout. Then I jump on my six o'clock success call with my mastermind partner and <laughs> we review our goals and we talk about what our wins were for the day before and we set our intentions for the day. And like I said, sometimes the intention is career focused and sometimes it's family focused or sometimes it's like, look, I got to get some sleep today. <laughs> you know, it's, but we set our intention for the day. And then what I love to do is I love to go to the rooftop of my building and I love to set a 15 minute timer and just sit in silence and watch the sun come up. Wow. And I, cause outdoor time is so important to me. And if I can get that in first thing in the morning, I feel so much centered and filled, fulfilled. I call it filling your cup. I feel so full that now it, my cup is runnething, runnething. That's not a word. <laughs> well, how does it go? Your runneth, runneth, runneth over, right? <laughs> over. <laughs> and then I come home and I'm in the best mood and I can be there for my babe and for my husband. Yes. It just because I think this is like, that's the key. If we, if we allow ourselves to have that time and just to, to, you know, to set aside that time, then we can actually be present with our children when we're actually there. Because mm -hmm. when we give ourselves some space and when we're allowing ourselves to, to, to have that time, we're like, okay, I, whether it's half an hour or whatever it is that you can do. And, you know, I used to think, oh, it's impossible. It's just, it is what it is. I'm going to just be tired all the time. And, 
you know, I never have time to exercise it to do, you know, and it, it is all about just making it a priority. Cause when it, you set it as a priority, it's not easy. To ever start a new habit, but it's so worth it when you do mommies. Uh, but I have to tell you, Valentina, that the last bullet point is my favorite. And it really, me too, me too, me too, me too. It really, mommies, if you are listening, like if you want, listen up and write this down, seriously, take notes because the actual key, in my opinion, you know where you're wanting to go. You're taking the action, you're eliminating things, you're setting your boundaries, you're creating your sacred time. But none of that matters if you're having one of those horrible, like exhausted, just feeling down in the dumps type of days. The best mm -hmm. thing you can do to help stay motivated and focused is get an accountability partner. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. You're talking to the two girls that are each other's accountability partners. <laughs> um, and it's so important because when you have that, you have a partner in the sense of when you're feeling down, you have somebody who can help you step up mm -hmm. and also not let you stay in that because mm, 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 mm. it's happened mornings where I know I've come in and I'm like oh. and then you know Molly is like a reminder of don't stay in that rut like come up you know and it's so it's accountability in the sense that we, up, we, we uplift one another but we stay also focused and remind ourselves this is what we're here for we're here to help each other out and um, but we don't also don't allow for ourselves to stay in that bad mode or to keep uh, talking about, you know, to just go on and on and on and on and on about what's not working. Mm -hmm. And we sort of, go, you know, bring ourselves back to the right path. Yes. So mommies, I want to encourage you to join a mastermind group. Um, I do hold one at Mindful Mamas TV, but whether it's mine or somebody else's, get an accountability partner that's going yes. to help hold you accountable towards achieving your goals. Absolute game changer. Yeah, and make sure that that person, and I, you know, I'm just going to read it again from the book because we, we were sharing uh, from the last uh, Mama Talk Live. We were, yeah. we, were, um, we were sharing basically four things to do so that you don't give up on your New Year's resolution. Mm -hmm. And so this is basically the same one, one of the same tips, but it, what it was talking about, and I'm going to read it because it's exactly what we were talking about. Um, it's to find a friendly alliance with one or more persons who will encourage you to follow through with both your plan and purpose. Mm -hmm. And the key thing is a friendly allowance, alliance. You need to, you know, align yourself with a person and find yourself with a person who will encourage you. Well, the opposite of somebody who brings you down. So if you know that there's somebody who, you know, doesn't really believe in your dream or doesn't really, um, is not really there to be supportive, that's not the right person. <laughs> you want to find somebody who believes in what you want to do and who will encourage you on those bad days, on those days where you feel like giving up on your dreams. Mm -hmm. That's what you need. And if you have that person, you can call them. That person will be there to lift you up. And believe you me, they will help you stay motivated. Because um, even when the kids are pulling you in a million different directions. Yeah. And I'm, I'm so glad you bring that up, that it's somebody that's going to encourage you. Because we all have friends out there. And we maybe we were those friends for a while or still are mm -hmm. sometimes. When, when you're in the rut, when you're feeling down, you know, coming down with you and like, oh, I know that sucks. I can't believe, I can't believe that's what's happening with your child at school or I, whatever it is. Like, I can't believe your husband said, no, that's not the, those are not the mommy friends you need to be um, talking to if you're going to stay motivated and focused. You've got to talk to those mommy friends that are like, cool girl, I'm sorry that that's happening to you, but let's talk about how to raise your vibes and take action towards what it is you do want in your life. Exactly. And that's a that's a, a game changer too. And realizing that those people that will have you come back to, you know, not allow you to stay in that rut, but will try to bring you back to your, your focus, those are like actually your alliances. Alliances that will help you grow and alliances that will help you achieve what it is that you want. You know, um, you know, versus what Molly said, somebody who just comes down to your level because at any given moment in time and day, and listen, and I'm going to be, I'm going to be real. So this morning for me was one of those days we got on the call and I'm like, Molly, I had the most horrible day yesterday. <laughs> that, that was, so I woke up obviously not in like the best state, but it's so good to know that, that I can get on that call and then have somebody who were like, okay, you know, no matter what has happened the day before, let's go back to focusing on 
on what it is that what it is that we want, what it is where our goal and our intentions lie, and what is it that we're going to do to go step by step in order to accomplish all of those things that we want to accomplish. Yes. Okay, mommies. So here are those four bullet points again. Set your goal. Eliminate and concentrate. Use the power of no and set those boundaries if you need to. Get um, a sacred practice and make sure you get into a mastermind group or find an accountability partner who's going to help you elevate in all areas of your life. That's right. That's right. We hope these tips will help you. Please let us know in the comments below. What are the things that you do to stay motivated while the kids are driving you in a million, million different directions? And please make sure to like our page, share this with any mommies who you think might benefit from the talk. And Molly and Luna, tell them where they can follow you on the social media. Yes. So follow me over at Mindful Mamas TV. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. That's right. And you can follow me on at Mamas Con Ganas on all social media. Okay, and mommies, you join us here next Tuesday at 12 p.m. Central Standard Time, 1 p.m. Eastern for our next hot mommy related topic that's right we'll see you next week i need to go i need to go downstairs because my, my baby went out for a walk oh. I think I should go a little bit. <laughs> that sounds good i have some serious laundry to fold and put away so i'll see you mommies later okay bye mama <laughs>